perseverance in sports is doing the small things daily. Mm. It's not waiting for competition. You mm. should be faster in practice than on competition day. Oh, wow. Competition day should be easy. Hi, it's Eric Weir, and welcome to my next episode on Stuttering Your Way to Success with my very special guest, James Trapp. He is a man of many talents. He's played in the NFL. He's been in the Super Bowl. He's been in the Olympics. He's been quoted as one of the fastest men in the world. He's been very, very successful. Today, we're going to learn from him about how to organize life, about gratitude, about making, making steps, being decisive. And I can't wait to learn from you today. So I'm, I met James at a, at, at a golf tournament with, with Dabo. And you were with FCA at the time, yeah, right? Yes, I was. I was with FCA. So what was that like? FCA was awesome. You know, I was the campus director for Clemson. So it was really good. You got a chance to, um, you know, mentor the young people mm -hmm. and also the coaches. So it was really good. It's a good fit. <laughs> And what kind of things, I mean, it, when you talk to kids, and are there, or do you have like a go-to, like there's one, two, or th three things that, that they may want to think about? It really depends on the, <laughs> the audience. Right. But um, dedication is one of my first, you know, things that I want to talk with kids about. Right. Being dedicated to your, your vision board. Right. You know, if they have one. If they don't have one, you know, challenge them to create one. And then perspective, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, where's your perspective in life? You right. Know, it doesn't matter where you are. It's about where you're trying to go. Of course. You of know, course. And, and trying to get there. And then my third one would be perseverance. Because mm. all those things are going to come, you know, right. dedication and perspective, they're going to come with perseverance. And oh, how sure. do you How do you get to the, uh, to the top of your list? You, you know, and, and as I've gotten to know you, I mean, when I first met, I didn't realize, like, you're, you're an Olympian. You uh, went to the Super Bowl. Uh, you have an amazing career, like a world, world's fastest man. I mean, some kind of some of the stories I heard, like uh, unbelievable. So, what did you learn about perseverance through sports? Through sports, perseverance in sports is doing the small things daily. Mm. It's not waiting for competition. You mm. should be faster in practice than on competition day. Oh wow. Competition day should be easy, mm -hmm. you know, no mm -hmm. stress, no worries, because you got, you know, you only run it 100 once, maybe, you know, maybe three times. Right, right. But in practice, you're running it 10 times. Wow. You know, well, um, your coach is giving you a certain time, and then, you know, 200, same way. Um, in football, same right. way, studying um, the quarterbacks, the receivers, the mm -hmm. offensive coordinators, you know, even from college. Right. You know, so – Perseverance in, 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 in sports is doing the small things daily right. um, and not worrying about failure when you're practicing. Wow. More about that because, I mean, the, the episode is study your, your way to success. So there's no success without setbacks, but in my experience. So how do you face failure when, when, you, ha when you have a setback? You absorb it. Mm. You know? People used to always say, yeah, hey, Trev, you got wore out. You lost. <laughs> and I would say, no, nah, I learned. Right. Oh, wow. Because the next wow. time I see that person, yeah, I now study them now. Right. I know their good glitches. I know how they warm up, right. you know, or I've watched them on tape. So, right. you know, I've learned. Okay. And, you know, my challenge now is to, you know, Get on top of them, you know, to wow. win. Wow. Now, now I, I know I've, I've talked to you about the different people you've raised and other other f famous names, but there were, I mean, you're interesting because you, you had an NFL career, you had a college football career, and you had a track career as well. Not many people can say they've excelled were world class at all three. So going to track, I mean, were, were, were there any races that, that, that stand out in your mind or uh, in, in, in that field? One of the best races was in uh, – it was either in Life and Life, Finland, I mean, uh, uh, France, or Paris. I forget the the, the city we right. were in, but it was eight lanes and one American, me, uh -huh. and seven Africans. Oh. <laughs> 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 you know? and, uh, and I said, you know what? 
when I beat you guys today, I didn't say it in that format, but yeah. when I beat you guys today, yeah. I'm going to be the king of Africa. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I won. You know, this by, real oh, one. yeah, by a good margin. And, um, you know, they celebrate you over there. So mm. I had a big, like, four-foot tall champagne bottle, right? Oh, my word. So I just took it, took the top off of yeah. it. And, you know, I had the guys help me. We just sprayed the audience. So oh, that's funny. That was one of my... Um, more interesting sure. races, sure. you know. Um, Any rivalries? My rivalry uh, really was in college. Okay. You know, because, you know, like, you know, running against professionals, you know, I was still a collegiate, but running against professionals, you know, there's no rival rivalry with them mm -hmm. because they really just looking at you like, mm, you, you're not going to be around when it gets hot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when the season gets hot, right. you, you're going to be done faded out because right, you right. run all this, you know, college track. Right. Um, <clears throat> my rivalry was, you know, through through college, I never really worried about beating guys. Mm -hmm. My rivalry was getting myself ready for running overseas. Okay. You know, to, to let the pros know, hey, I made it through a college okay. right. season. I'm right, here right, to, right. I'm here to whoop your butt, you know, <laughs> so – yeah. yeah. Well, and and then uh, with the Olympics, I mean, I mean, can't you, you, you can't tell me about about that or <laughs> give me the, the the setup on the Olympics? Oh man, it was it was it was hell. <laughs> <laughs> was it really? <laughs> it, it really was. No, I wasn't expecting to hear oh, that. Man, no, I was expecting something hell. different. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed the experience. A uh, lot of politics in it. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, a lot of politics in it. Um, but I enjoyed the experience. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they tried to wipe me off of it, you know, because they wanted Carl to run mm -hmm. on the four by one, but he didn't make the four by one. Oh wow! He barely made the long jump. You oh, know? No way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was older. It was time for him to be out the way. Right. He didn't want to get out the way though. Right, right. You know, and during the season, I had beat him a couple times. You know. Wow. And so it was, it was really time for him to be out the way. But it was a, it was a fun experience because you're in a village. And you're seeing, like, the best athletes in the world. Right. You know, like, really. Like, you know, I saw the, the seven foot two Mongolian Chinese mm -hmm. female athlete. Mm -hmm. And to see her play basketball. Mm -hmm. And see the basketball, the girl, the female basketball in her hand, mm -hmm. like a tennis ball. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, one of my best mem uh, uh, mem memories of that, that time was I was on the elevator. Mm-hmm. And all these white dudes got on the elevator. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like the shortest one was probably six two. Oh wow! Right, mm -hmm. and they were looking at me, and they were like, "So we know what sport you probably are in, mm -hmm. athletics." Right, and I was right, like, right. "Yeah." They said, "So tell us what sport we're in." And I looked at them. I said, "Well, you're not the dream team, right?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "So uh, volleyball." Right. They were like, "No," and I was like, "Man, I don't know." And they said, "Water polo." Wow. And they're like, you ought to come and watch. So that's when I was, you know, being invited, I sure, started going sure, to the sure. other sports. Right. And to see, man, they're, man, it's it's tenacious in that water. Oh. You know, to see them, you know, they're getting pulled down underneath. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. you know, I see why they're tall. Yeah. But, man, it was just, it was an amazing sport. Now, I saw, you know, archery. I, I went to a lot of the different right. uh, sports. Yeah, I, 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 I've seen a, just a little bit of, of water polo, but I didn't realize how deep the water is because those guys. Oh yeah, they can't out, test the bottom like, like their waist. Yeah, you know? I'm like man, they're kicking that yeah. hard. I mean, they're kicking like, hard. It's twelve I mean, foot deep. That's what. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'd be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so they're, they don't want no one in there can test the bottom. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. It it's, is. It's, it's an amazing sport. Now hopping over to to football. I mean, you had high school football, you had college. Were there coaches that you learned a lot from? All my coaches I learned from, mm -hmm. all my head coaches and position coaches and coordinators, I learned from each one of them. Mm -hmm. um, did I listen to all of them? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I didn't do that. But, you know, my, my high school coach, um, my head coach is Darrell Oslager. You mm -hmm. know, he, he's in the Hall of Fame there in Oklahoma as I'm getting ready to go in in August. Mm -hmm. But was an amazing man, mm -hmm. you know, because he uh, – he challenged us, mm. you know. He kept us like, you know, some some schools now they would take a freshman and put them on, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. J on varsity. Mm -hmm. He was like, no, you guys stand together, 
Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. he's like, I got a crew right here, and mm -hmm. you're not going to play, so I'm not going to waste you. Mm -hmm. So you're going to play with the freshman team. Okay. Then you go to the, you know, to the JV. Mm -hmm. If if the crew is gone, mm -hmm. you're going to go to varsity. Right. And so we ended up going to varsity. And, and you know, because I was like, it was very pivotal in my life um, because I, you know, my stepmom, I mean, my stepdad and my mom divorced, mm -hmm. and my dad was here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was in my teenage years. Mm -hmm. And then my position coaches were Coach Colbert and Coach Hunt, who mm -hmm. both had passed away, but they were very pivotal, pivotal, pivotal in my life. And then, you know, I got to college, I had Coach Ford. Oh, wow. That speaks for itself. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. right. You know, Coach Ford was an amazing man because, one, he was like, I'm not recruiting a kid from Oklahoma. He was like, that's a waste of money. Wow, <laughs> he was really? Like, he was like, you're going to go to OU, Nebraska, Arkansas, Texas. That's a waste of my money. He said, I ain't never recruited a kid past Mississippi. Really? Yeah, at that time, I was the farthest kid he had recruited West. Oh, my word. And uh, I was like, Coach, I had to write, literally write a letter to him, you know, and he had to fact check it. That really? I was born in Greenville. My family's from Greenville. And, uh, you know, he sent coaches out there every week. <laughs> Did he really? <laughs> well, wow, that's a big To make sure, hey, this kid for real? Yeah. Um, and I came here, man. Coach Ford was awesome, man. And um, I had Bill Oliver as my position coach. They call him Brother Oliver. Right. And uh, he taught us about being a ninja. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he used to turn the lights out. And put a flashlight up to his face. <laughs> like, I want y'all to be ninjas today. <laughs> like, and then, you know, in, in the NFL, I had Coach Shell. I had Art Shell first. Oh, wow. My first two years. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Really challenged, challenged us. I had Howie Long as my vet, you know, because we had drafted two, oh, two wow. DBs. And yeah. So they were, I was given as a rookie to the D line, which I preferred. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I had Howie Long, who taught me how to watch film. Interesting. You know, okay. It was so crazy because on the field he would get down in his stands and he'd throw a one up or a two up. He right. Like, hey, kid. Right. But he never called me trap. He never called me Jane. He never. He only called me kid. Is that right? The whole time. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I don't even know if he knew my name. But, right. Right. You know, hey, kid. So that was good. Then you know, of course, we had Brian Billick. Mm -hmm. um, Brian Billick was was an interesting coach to me because yeah, he had come from Minnesota. But he came, he was more uh, optimistic than any coach I had. Mm -hmm. Like, he literally came in and said, you know, we're going to go eight and eight. And we looked at him like, man, I just came over as a free agent. I kind of want to win. <laughs> right, right, I've right. I've been right, losing right. at the Raiders. Right, right, right. <laughs> he said, we're going to go eight and eight. And I'll be darned if we didn't go eight and eight. Really? It was in March. It was March of 1999. He called all the guys in. Everybody came to OTAs. He sat down with us. He said, we're going to go 8-8, eight and eight, but the next year we're going to win the Super Bowl. Whoa. And we went 10-6 and six that season, and we won the Super Bowl. <laughs> what was that? What was playing in the Super Bowl like? You know, getting to the Olympics, I said, was hell, but it still was, a, it was enjoyable mm -hmm. because you're really seeing the best of the best athletes in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see a 395-pound you know, six, eight javelin thrower, you know, <laughs> I mean, a discus thrower from, mm -hmm. from you know, Russia or right, one, right, of those, right. one of those countries. And you're like, that's a real athlete. Right. <laughs> they like statue. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> but, you know, getting in the Super Bowl and seeing, you know, working that hard. Mm -hmm. You know, athletics is, is a lot more individual, definitely mentally. Mm hmm um, and, and sometimes physically, because you only got a few teams in there. But literally being on a team, a Super Bowl team, mm -hmm. having that one drive, because mm -hmm. you can't have a chink in the armor. Right. Like everybody has to have a focus. Mm -hmm. it's, it's no pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. You know, I, our offense went, I think, four or five weeks not scoring a point. But the defense never turned. Wow. You know, and the reporter's like, oh, what do you feel about the offense? Hey, we feel like they're good. Oh, wow. Good. Yeah, That's cause, good. Because you're playing against us, you're only going to get three points, maybe six. Right. And then we had Matt Stover, who was kicking the heck out the ball. Right. Um, you know, getting not whatever it took, nine points, 12 <laughs> points, you know. So Dog it, fight. Yeah, so yeah. it was like at one point, it's just, it, it was just us and Matt. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and then, you know, Trent and the offense started kicking in. But, you know, that team effort mm-hmm. gives you goosebumps to me because you're really right. in a team sport. Right. And you dare. Mm-hmm. Like you, you dare with all the excitement early because you get there a week early and you, you're going through all the emotions, all the interviews. You know, your coaches are trying to tell you to relax. Don't, you know, get too up or too down. Just kind of stay steady. Um, you know, you got your family down there. Mm. But then the day of the game is so exciting. Mm. You know, you got the flyover. You got the fans. Right. You know, you got fans in the stadium that wasn't just Giant fans right. or Ravens fans. Right. They were just hey, they were fans of the Super Bowl. Right, well, I mean, <laughs> you know? that's true. That's true. And because yeah. uh, they feel that Buck Stadium right. out. Right. Um, but it was just you know you got the best of the best for that year. Mm-hmm. And and honestly, our Super Bowl, um, I think uh, Kevin told me that our Super Bowl was like the oldest two teams. Right. You know, our teams had you know. Double digit guys, right? And the Giants had double digit guys. Wow, that had been in the league, so you know it was good. And then you know we almost got a goose egg. We've been the first goose egg, mm-hmm. um, but they scored on special teams. Oh know? wow! And I was wow. the captain of special teams, so it was that know, was good. Yeah, it was yeah. it was a lot on my head. Like man, why you let them score? You know why yo yo? But you know they they got one, but they didn't see the fifty yard line. So I think the fourth quarter. Oh, my word. That's incredible. Is there a play that stands out in, in, in your mind? It's a couple plays that stand out in that Super Bowl. But the one that, that I remember best, it, it, I can see it as clear as day, is <laughs> it's a series of plays. Mm-hmm. So they, they came in first and ten. We had kicked the ball out to them. They got the, we tackled. I don't forget who the returner was at, like, the 18-yard line. Mm-hmm. So Ray comes out and said, hey, they getting ready to run off tackle. He said, don't worry about it. I was playing nickel. Mm-hmm. He was like, don't worry about that, Trap. And literally, he's talking to me. <laughs> he's like, don't worry about that. They getting ready to run off tackle. Right, right, right. Boom, tackling. Then second down, they getting ready to throw. They getting ready to throw. So he was like, hey, hey, everybody, he's getting ready to throw the ball. Getting ready to throw the ball. They threw the ball. Uh, I think Jamie – Knocked it down. Mm-hmm. Somebody passed it. For, I think it was Jamie or Rod. One of them knocked the ball down. Third down. Um, oh, I can't think of the quarterback name. Collins. I think it was mm-hmm. his name was Collins. He came from the Panthers. He really looked up. He said, so what are we getting ready to do now? <laughs> <laughs> Ray said, y'all getting ready to run a, a swing pass, and he's going to get tackled for a loss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> and I was the nickel. Oh, wow. So he's like, man, I'm worried about that receiver. Wow. And I ran over and, you know, I made a tackle for a loss. And they punted. Wow. So it was like that the rest of the day. Wow. How much you know? trash talk is going on? 24-7. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> as long as you're on that field, you're talking trash. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. You know, certain guys didn't talk. You know, Jerry, Jerry Rice, you know, he didn't talk. He called an anniversary ball on me. I don't I don't know what anniversary ball it was, but <laughs> <laughs> I got him back though. I got a pick. Yeah. Um, but he he never said anything. Um but most of the guys, you know, they they chip they chirp. Oh, yeah. oh, you know, oh, I chirp a lot. I I knew that. I yeah. knew that, yeah. Yeah, you're 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 a good chirper. I remember yeah. you chirped a lot at Top Golf. I remember oh, yeah. I was going to like an athlete like you to <laughs> to for me to, to take you to Top Golf and school you like I did. You know, that was, I was the wrong athlete for you. Yeah. <laughs> and I told you going in, I'm ambidextrous. I said, y'all can hit left or right. I asked you what you prefer. <laughs> and you was like, go ahead with your right, and I wore you out, right? Yeah, you got me. And, yeah, then, yeah. and then I said, you There's know what? There's the chirping started right here. That's when you started said, chirping on me. Let me switch over to left. I'm going to so, whip you with my left. So, so we can make it. At least the game, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> At least you don't make yeah. it easy. Yeah, you're, you're seeing it. You're seeing you it action. I know it's terrible. You he know. does. He's a he, he lets it. He lets it out. Hey, you know, <laughs> talking junk the whole time. No, I felt it. I felt it. I knew. I knew that was going on, particularly with you. So, so what players do 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 do, 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 do you respect who you play with, like in the Super Bowl? You mentioned Jerry Rice, and you know. I mean, I respect yeah. a lot of players that right. played the game. Um, sure. 
the way we play is is totally different now. Mm-hmm. You know, um, even practice wise, I think they can have like seven padded practices. Okay, man, we had three of days. Wow, <laughs> three of days. Wow. <laughs> yes, yeah, two padded practices and then a walkthrough. You know wow. what I'm saying? So it was different then, but I respected right. a lot of the players I played against. You know, uh, Barry Sanders respected him. Um, I respected him also that he was like, I don't want to go to another team. I want to get paid here. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Rod Woodson, of course, you know, mm-hmm. coming in and then getting a chance to play with Rod. Mm-hmm. You know, I played against him while he was a Steeler and I was a Raider, but playing with him was was special. Uh, Shay, Shannon Sharp was a, was mm-hmm. a special guy because I, mm-hmm. I actually was in the league before him. Mm-hmm. Not I, when he came to Denver, it was like a right. headache. Sure, <laughs> you know sure, sure. Like we were two and twelve. We played him fourteen times because we had to play him twice a year, and we were two and twelve against against oh. <laughs> Elway and Sharp. But to play with him was awesome. Um, you know, and Jonathan Augen, right. the left tackle. You know, just a special guy. Um, and then you know, opposing teams like like Eddie George. Like you had to get up for Eddie George. Mm-hmm. You knew the ball was going to Eddie George. Mm-hmm. And you knew Eddie George is 245 pounds of muscle Mm -hmm. (laughs) with speed. Mm -hmm. So you had to be ready for that impact. Um, But, you know, it was good. It was was good to play football in those days and and to kind of see it. it, It's transferred over to a kind of newer type football to me because it's less hitting. Right. Which, um, um, Probably should be less right, hitting, right? You know, but I look at the the gear they wear now is a lot more protective, right? You know, when right. I, when I look at my helmet because my son played at Clemson and then at Furman. I look in his helmet, look at my helmet, I was like, dang, how did I make it? <laughs> <laughs> Why did I choose this? That's right. <laughs> that seems right. safe compared to the ones maybe 20, 30 years earlier. Oh, God. Then my helmet compared to, you know, yeah. back in the day, they didn't really have but one pad. Right. right. <laughs> like That's right it. here. Yeah. No um, doubt. So it's evolved into a, a, a better sport. Right. Um, but honestly, if I had a choice to go back to it, I wouldn't play football. Really? Mm, I wouldn't do it again. Wow. Just focus on track or? I would have focused on track or, you know, man, I, I would have just went to law school. I, I wouldn't have did football though. Wow. Just looking back on it, just because of the the, the pains after. Mm-hmm. You know, the mental anguish, the, the body, it tears you down. Mm. And a lot of people don't know that. Mm-hmm. You know, some guys will say, oh, I'll run back through it, but I think that's pride. Mm-hmm. But honestly, looking at it, I wouldn't play football again. And really? when my son laid it down, I was thankful, but mm-hmm. I wasn't going to tell him to lay it down, mm-hmm. you know, because everyone earns, like my wife said, you earn the right to call it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, she said that when I retired. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, but it afforded me a lot, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't have done it. I, I would have probably ran track. Oh, well. I would most that? definitely ran track and, you know, went on to law school. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. If you could talk to yourself, your 20-year-old self, <laughs> what advice would you give James Trapp, age 20? Don't mess with that girl. <laughs> Leave that one alone, too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Try to just get one. Yeah, that's right. Um, I would have made better choices at 20. Right. Knowing what I know now at 53. Right. At 20, I would have made better, I would think that I would have made better choices mm-hmm. with, uh, with my career. Mm-hmm. Clemson to me, I, I come from a pretty big high school, mm-hmm. but I really honestly didn't want to go to a huge college. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to go to o- OU, because mm-hmm. it's like almost. 50, 40, at that time, like 40,000 people. Yeah. So it's like over 50 now. I really wanted to go to a small school. So I would have made the decision earlier. So let's go back to 18 mm-hmm. to go to a smaller school. I see, okay. And, you know, and I wanted to be a, in law. Mm-hmm. I would have went to a school that had, you mm-hmm. know, the potential for me to go to law school. Mm-hmm. But... 20-year-old self moving forward, I would have made a lot of more financial 
decisions mm-hmm. on the better side of that, I would have left some girls alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't have drank as much. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize until I was in the league that I was really a functioning alcoholic. Really? Wow. Yeah. Um, I realized, well, the Raiders made me realize that when they put me in the program. <laughs> I was just a functioning alcoholic. Wow. And I don't think a lot of people realize I own it. But, you know, I didn't realize It's good to that. say that and own that. That's good. That's yeah. good. So yeah. I, that was something. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I mean, to, to, to be able to consume that much alcohol and still perform at uh-huh. world-class levels is remarkable. It is. That tells me something, too, though. Mm-hmm. It tells me what I left on the table. Right. You know, when I think about that, it's like, man, what did you leave on the table? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I'm, I'm Hall of Fame in all my in the schools, and now in the state of Oklahoma. Why, why not in Canton? Mm-hmm. So I left a lot on the table. Mm, wow, interesting. Okay, you know, that's that's some of the bitter sweetening of it. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, you left a lot on the table. Mm-hmm. You were that kind of athlete with all the drinking, and mm-hmm. you know, I had some drugs in there too. Right, right, right. So it's like right. you left a lot on the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like wow. Mm. You know, so I think about that. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. So, so what do you see as next for you? Next for me is is I volunteer a lot. Mm. You know, I talk to a lot of different um, people. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, young people, adults, mm-hmm. young adults. Um, my wife calls them adult cats. <laughs> <laughs> they flow in and they flow out. Right, right, right. But um, that's that's what's next. Mm-hmm. You know, to try to finish life strong with some good, you know, wisdom mm-hmm. to the young people. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, you know, finish this book. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what's next. So, so do, you, do, you, do you have a title for, for, for your book? Birthing Pains. Oh wow, that's a great title. Don't yeah, you steal it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> write that down. It's a copyright. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what's the? T- I mean, so, so kind of walk me through as 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 we prepare to wrap up a little bit about birthing pains. We got to look forward to, and then also, I mean, if somebody wants to reach you, how, how could they? How could they reach out to you? So, birthing pains is a story of my life. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot that goes into it. Um, a lot of heartache. A lot of triumphs. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really basically a story of my life. Mm-hmm. A lot what some people know and a lot what most people don't know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my wife's helping me because, you know, oh, I can, I can barely see. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, so I do the audio part and she, she kind of nice. writes it down. That's but, good. Good teamwork. But, um that's Angel. That's fantastic. That's Angel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah she's my, great. That's my Angel. But that's what it's about. Right. You know, because I have a story, you know, that's probably going to hit someone in some particular part of their life. Well, there's no question about it. I mean, you just know. what you're saying here is, is super impactful. And, you know, kind of go from there. I don't have any any social media. I just I just can't keep up with that stuff. I got you. Um, so reaching me is secretive. <laughs> 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 yeah. I don't really, I don't really, I'll reach you. I'll reach uh, you. <laughs> there you go. I like um, it. I like it. But um, um, my wife's email is atrap3092 at gmail.com. There you go. That's, there you a, go. that's a better way to reach me because she'll, she'll be the one. She'll that, run you down. She'll, she'll put it on calendar. She'll be the I one that'll set it up. You. I got you. You know, and follow up. I like you. Jerry called me, but she was like, Who called you? <laughs> <laughs> it's Jerry. I said, Jerry. She was like, Jerry. I said, Jerry O'Neill. And then she always relate everyone to you. Right, right. So she right. was like, Okay, that's Eric's guy. That's I was right. like, Yeah. She said, So what do you have? I said, well, I got an appointment with them. She said, When is it? And, you know. Right, right. So 
I don't want to be shamed. She dresses me. So. That's right. Look, but she's doing a good job. Yeah, I need a little. I mean, do, yeah, that's right. That's right. She's doing a good job. Like yeah. I say, you're looking prosperous, looking well, good. Thank you. Thank looking you. good. So, so uh, uh, as we, we, we prepare to close, what it, what one piece of advice or two pieces? If you if you're, if you're talking to somebody who says, "Hey, I'm an athlete," or "I'm starting a business," or "I'm at a I'm at an infl- inflection point," I'm trying to make decisions. You know, how important to you is getting them to clarity? And, 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 and their direction. Kind of what would you, you mentioned perseverance, you, you, you mentioned, you know, put in, put in the, the work, but is, is, there, is there something you, you'd recommend them to do or, or to think about? First off is prayer. Mm. That's number one. I learned that in 2000, okay. well, 1999. Mm-hmm. And when I turned my life over to the Lord, first off is prayer. You know, allow the Lord to give you the wisdom. And in that prayer, it's not about asking. Mm-hmm. It's about being quiet. You know, the Lord oh, said, yeah. be still and know that I'm God, right? right? Right, So just be quiet and allow him to filter through all your junk. Mm-hmm. All your, I want to get this done, but just be quiet. Because mm. the Lord he still speaks. He still provides miracles. And maybe that will come through someone or maybe that'll come through particularly just him. Right. You know, but you got to first seek God, mm-hmm. you know. And um, secondly, after you do that, the thing that, <clears throat> sorry, mm-hmm. the thing that you can't negate is a vision board or a plan. Mm-hmm. Like you got to have it. If you, if you don't have it, then you're going to get sidetracked. No matter how hard you try, mm-hmm. you're gonna get sidetracked. You know, I I'll give you a thing. When when Dabo called me to come be the chaplain, that's when you know I was I was already with FCA. I was at the Falcons. And when I came, I said, Dabo, I got a five year vision plan. Five years. That's five good. years. Wow. I said I'm I'm committed here for five years. Mm-hmm. After five years, we we'll negotiate what's next. Well, we did everything in four years. You're ahead of schedule. We were ahead of schedule because we had a plan. Right. And then I went back to the league. I went back, you know, with the Bills, um, with Rex, um, club team. And when we got there, we had a plan. Now, it was interrupted right? because, you know, Rex made some decisions that, you know, hurt a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But still we had a plan. Mm -hmm. So God first and then – Having a plan, having a vision board, mm-hmm. you know, you know, in, in the Bible it says you build your house on a rock. Well, how do you build your house on on a rock? You got to measure that. Right. <laughs> you know, I got to drill into it. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's not going to be easy. Right. But you got to plan everything. Right. Now you build your house on the sand. Right. You just draw a box out, throw some stuff out, and think it's going to be cool. But as soon as that wave <laughs> comes, that house gone. Right, <laughs> you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, <laughs> we, right, right. We see right. that a lot, don't right. we? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so, you know, that's that's the way you have to be. You got to put God in it first, you know, and just be still and be quiet. Gotcha. You wow, know? wow. Interesting. I mean, you've been successful, so you, you know exactly what that looks like. It's important to have vision, for sure, and clarity. Yeah. No yeah. doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um so do you have a time in the morning or in the evening? I mean, is there, is there like, oh, hey, this, yeah. is what, this is what I do. I'm Jen Traps. I'm, no matter what, I'm going to do this, like a daily plan, prayer time? No matter what, I'm up at 5 praying. Oh, there you go. And then I read. Mm-hmm. I think some people read and they pray. <laughs> right, 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 right. I pray then I read. Okay. And the reason why I pray and read is because I've read the Bible four times mm-hmm. when I was – younger and mm-hmm. knock it you know i just i was in love with it mm-hmm. like some people are like, no, i was in love with the bible mm-hmm. you know i've read other stuff but and i'm a reader that's mm-hmm. what frustrates me now is not being able to see the words mm-hmm. so i do a lot on my phone and, and ipad but i get up and i read mm-hmm. then i pray mm-hmm. and then i pray with my wife mm-hmm. after she gets up mm-hmm. so those are you know those are daily I wouldn't even call them habits. Those are daily needs. Mm. Like some people, some people need a coffee in the morning. Right, They're right. Like, I need that prayer. Mm. I need that time alone with God. Then I need His Word because mm-hmm. through prayer, He usually takes me to a word. Mm-hmm. You know, um, 
and then I pray with my wife so mm -hmm. I, I cover her mm -hmm. and we pray we we pray over the children and over mm -hmm. our household that's great you that's know in our friends how does that set your day up I mean how, how if a day if you didn't do that is it different than a day that you do that well I do it every day but throughout the day there comes that challenge mm -hmm. you know some of those challenges I absorb and keep moving. Mm -hmm. Some of those challenges, I put up a board, right. and that old man come back out. Right, and right. Like, yeah, no, bro, <laughs> not today. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and then I, I battle depression. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people don't understand what depression is and, mm -hmm. and, and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I battle with that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but you know, I got some really good people in my corner, mm -hmm. and. And prayer helps, right, with that? Prayer helps. You know, it yeah. helps ease you. It helps slow you down, the breathing. Mm -hmm. I'm not into yoga, but, yeah, you yeah, know, the yeah. breathing yeah. And, 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 and things like that. And, and one of the better things, um, Eric, is is getting outside. Mm -hmm. Oh, being outside, yeah. Okay. Being yeah. outside, walking. Mm -hmm. You know, with your cell phone off, mm -hmm. walking. Like, we go to Unity Park. Probably every other weekend. Nice. You know, because we, we're empty nesters. Mm -hmm. But we just walk. Mm -hmm. You know, we walk and we talk. Wow. You know, and just, you know, you smelling the air, you seeing the families, the dogs and cats mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. but just being outside. It's Man, healing. It's, it's a healing thing. Right, right. Just the air moving around. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it's so funny you say that. People try to relax by watching television or <laughs> I'll relax by you know, watching the news, yeah, right? It's yeah. like, that's not, I don't think that works yeah, too no. well. No, no, <laughs> maybe. It's yeah. just draining your brain because you're trying to focus. Yeah, right. When you're outside, you're just relaxing. Yeah, that's good. That's true relaxing. That's good. Yeah, I, I, I have a routine in the morning as well, so that's really good. That's fantastic. Well, good. Well, thank you so much for being on the show yeah. and for sharing from your heart with us. I mean, this is r r r very helpful information. So, thank you so much. Yeah, thank good, you. Good having you on. Bye.